Geekazine and Geek Smack is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network over at techpodcast.com. If it's tech, then it's here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's another episode of the Geekish or Smackish the Geek Smack, where we smack the geek out of you like somebody would smack some cellos into playing Star Wars. Bum, ba, bum, bum, ba, ba, bum. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is episode number 210. I'm your host, Jeffrey Powers. we got a great show. We're going to be talking about Facebook uh, buying Gorilla. We're going to be talking about, uh, what else are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about a $100 tablet. We're going to talk on the geek side, like I said, cello, Star Wars, and, and cool stuff like that. And then the Xbox. Is the Xbox getting out of the gaming market and into the home entertainment, full home entertainment market? We're going to talk about that. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Of course, we're first brought to you by Roku. Stop dreaming, start streaming. Go over to Roku.com, or I'm sorry, Geekazine.com forward slash Roku to get yourself a Roku starting at $49. Go to meeting, go over to go uh, learn how you can get yourself go to meeting for 30 days for free by going going over to go to meeting. And of course, Stitcher.com. Go over to Stitcher.com forward slash geek and enter in your name. And download the application to win $100. And then, of course, all this video is done by Telestream and Wirecast. Go Pro with Wirecast Pro and you can get yourself a GoPro camera. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into your Geek Smack for this week. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Jeffrey Powers here. Welcome to the show we call the Geekish of Smacks, the Geek Smack Show, over at www.geekazine.com or thegeeksmack.com. Got to move around a couple things here, so I'm kind of figuring out what's going on. And of course, we're still upstairs in the Geek, the new Geek Studio. How you doing? If this is the first time that you've come to the audio or the video show, well, we do this every single week, every single Tuesday for a Wednesday consumption, I always say. And of course, we have the greatest of the tech news and the greatest of the geek news and a little bit of everything in between over at the Geek Smack. You can go over and you can subscribe to the show notes. If you go over to geekazine.com, you go up to the top and uh, you'll see the bar. And you'll see the RSS feeds, and if you hit it, you'll, go, you'll get a drop-down menu. You can subscribe to the Geek Smack in audio or video format, the special media feed, and the brand new show, iPad 365, that's coming in about uh, three, four weeks. iPad 365, an application for your iPad a day for the next 365 days. Can't go wrong. If you got an iPad for Christmas, or you're given an iPad for Christmas, these are applications you want to look for and go from there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, uh, once again, like I said, go over to geekazine.com to find out more information. But of course, we've got a lot of great stuff. First of all, I want to talk to you about a prediction I made two weeks ago. I basically said that Spotify was, uh, Facebook was going to buy Spotify. That was my prediction. Well, it didn't happen. Spotify ended up getting an app store, which is great. Now, do I still think that Facebook is going to buy Spotify? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I have no doubt in my mind. In the next 12, 12 months, Spotify will, uh, will be bought by Facebook. Unless somebody pulls out a card and buys it before them. You know, there's a lot of uh, companies that could buy Spotify. But I think Facebook will be the one that makes the purchase. Mark my words, in the next 12 months, Facebook will at least make a bid on Spotify if they haven't already. But of course, we're going to talk about Facebook in a little bit here. Um, next week, just so you know, next week I'm going to Detroit again for another embargo session, which means that there's no Geek Smack show to, uh, on Tuesday because I'll be flying. I'll be uh, uh, actually I'll be in Detroit learning about this embargo information. Um, I might do a show early or late. I don't know. We'll 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 see how that goes. But right now, don't expect a show. And if there is a show, maybe it'll be on Thursday as opposed to Tuesday. Um, if you're in the Madison, Wisconsin area, we do. Uh, I work with the Mad- Madison SMC Social Media Club, and of course, we do. We're doing our Jingle Mingle on the 13th. So when I get back from Detroit, I'm actually going to go downtown Madison, Wisconsin, and uh, participate in the Jingle Mingle. I hope to see you guys there. If you're in the Madison, Wisconsin area, if you have any questions on that, go over to geekazine.com, go to the contact page, and let me know from there. 
Um, and then, like I said, iPad 365 coming very soon, so check that out. Finally, CES is coming right around the corner. I know I'm going to be talking about that a lot. Go over to tpn.tv, but, of course, we need your donations because um, it costs a lot of money to not only go out there, get a hotel room, but also put together a booth where we're going to be live streaming 35 hours worth of content for you. So you just check it all out, and it's over at tpn.tv. Of course, I'll have the link in the show notes. I also have the links for all the PayPal's, so you can donate $25, $50, $100, or your choice. If you want to donate a million dollars, go ahead, donate a million dollars. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get into your tech smack for the week. All right, we're starting over on uh, on eWeek.com. Facebook is acquired location sharing service Gowalla. You know, I just talked about this with Spotify. Facebook is going to gear up and get ready to put together their Facebook phone. To do that, they need some more services. Gowalla is a perfect location sharing service that they can incorporate into Facebook. Now, for those of you who don't know, Gowalla was a company that was like that's that's like Foursquare. So you basically check in at your location. I didn't use it. I used Foursquare more than Gowalla. Um, I don't even think I have Gowalla on my phone. But the whole point is that uh, instead of getting badges, you got stamps and pins. And Gowalla tried to gear it more towards a uh, postcard type situation. So basically, if you clicked on Gowalla, um, you look down for your city, like San Francisco, Chicago, St. Louis, stuff like that. You click on it and you get a whole bunch of pictures, places and stuff like that. You could go. That'll incorporate really nice on Facebook. There's a few people in Gowalla land that really don't like it, but there's not much choice they can do because they did just get rid of it for, and I don't think they mentioned a price. But anyway, so uh, the whole point is that Facebook has purchased Gowalla, and so it's uh, it's now time for Gowalla to start incorporating into Facebook. Gowalla will officially stop as a service a service by the end of January. If you want to read more about that, go over to eweek.com for more information. Apple uh, Apple has been trying to block the U.S. sales of Samsung tablets uh, because Samsung blocked Apple. It was just this long, drawn-out, big thing over there. And I think my phone's ringing. I can hear it. Oh, well. Anyway, so my phone's ringing. <laughs> you probably can hear that in the background. The bottom line is that Samsung tried to uh tr tried to well did uh victoriously go and and block apple apple tried to block uh samsung in the united states failed miserably so um federal judge uh basically said no not gonna happen on the galaxy tab 10.1 so you samsung people you're really happy on there sorry about that you got a little bit distracted so let's move on from there mercurynews.com is where we got that information on there Apple TV, Apple TV, they're saying is, and, and we're, oh, we're on rumors. Let's go to rumors. Do I have my rumors thing up? Is that this one? All right. Apple TV is expected to come in three sizes um, from 32 inches all the way up to 55 inches. It's going to have, it's rumored to have the A6 chip, which is the next generation Apple chip. Chip. Right now they have the A5 chip, which is a dual core processor running at one gigahertz. I'm guessing that the A6 chip will also be dual core running at uh, 1.6 gigahertz to two gigahertz. But, you know, they can always surprise me on that. So, but an Australian technology site, Smart House reported, uh, that they chose three screen sizes from 32 inches to 55 inches, and they're building the software so people can call up programs with the company's Siri virtual personal assistant. So that's kind of cool. If you want to read more about this, go over to CNET.com. Gizmodo is uh, reporting a warning. Warning, Will Robinson. Warning. Warning. If you... There we go. If you install Siri, if you if you jailbreak and you install this new program called uh, H1 Siri, you might want to uninstall it because basically what happens is it sends all your information, all your information to China. Uh, 
on. There's a server in China that's uh, that's apparently collecting all that information. So do not install the full Siri, what's called H1 Siri. The full version of Siri, do not install. You have to jailbreak your iPhone to do that. And so it, it just don't even come close to, to that program. If you see it and you say, ooh, that's a cool program, don't do it. Don't do it. Any program like that that tries to uh, just don't do it. If it's not in the Apple Store, don't do it. That's all I'm saying. So anyway, if you want to check out more on that, go over to gizmodo.com. All right, over on Reuters, Verizon, I'm going to switch over here. Hold on a second. Verizon has blocked Google Wallet on the Galaxy Nexus. And you're going, what? And basically what it is, is uh, Google said that uh, the Verizon Wireless does not want to include Google Wallet on there. There's a lot of reports saying that uh, the Nexus S will actually have a, uh, their own pay service on the Nexus S. But you won't be able to get Google Wallet on there. I think it's a bad thing because I, I, you're not given a choice. I mean, what if I don't want this this Nexus S or Verizon service? What if I, what if I don't want it at all? Then I, and then I'm stuck with it. But anyway, it's uh it's actually pretty interesting to read. Uh, so and, and do you use Google Wallet? That's the real question. I've tried Google Wallet a little bit, but I wasn't too impressed with it. Um, but uh, let me know. Do you use it all the time? Is is it your uh, is it your item of choice? Let me know. Tweet tweet me at Geekazine or uh, Geekazine at gmail dot com. Let's move from there. AT&T, uh, this is back over on CNET. AT&T is rated one of the worst carriers for a second year in a row. For the second year in a row, uh, they basically have not been, they've been gr not great on this, the company's ratings. Uh, lower than Even lower than last year's. Consumer Reports Survey uh, examined the voice, the data, and text messaging service, and the customer cares. Uh, who fared best? Uh, and let's see, uh, who did fare best? <laughs> it was uh, basically AT and T. Uh, it was U.S. Cellular. That was it. That's who fared best, um, which is a local, actually Midwestern uh, cellular there. So I don't know how Verizon fared on that. Uh, but if you want to read more on that, go over to CNET.com. All right, I have a broken link here. I thought I had. Uh, Oh, yeah, we're talking about Mashable, and it looks like the link that I put to is not working. Basically, StumbleOn has done a redesign of their website. They're going more towards the groups. They, they added the groups functionality to, the, uh, to their design, so you can now check it out and, uh, and actually see if StumbleOn is something for you. Basically, it's a, a link re-aggregator, so I would go up on StumbleOn upon and... Uh, and I would put a link, like, for instance, you want to Geekazine's links in there. And then uh, people can share it or add it or, or plug. You know, it's kind of like with, uh, with, um, with uh, Dig.com or with, uh, with Google Plus or even with uh, Facebook. It's just link sharing right there. So they've improved their link share. Um, we've got the link. I'll, I'll put up a new link. I'll find out where this matchable link went and go from there. All right. There's a brand new tablet in town. It's called the Anoy, Anoil, Anoil, an, an, an Anoil, an, Anoil, uh, Anal, Anal, okay. Anal's launching the NOV07. It's an Android 4.0 tablet. $100 plus shipping. And so Anal branded Transformer Prime, just like the, uh, the uh, when they announced that. Um, but it's going to be running the full ice cream sandwich, uh, officially loaded, uh, be pre shipping with the ICS preloaded. It's packaged in in Genic, uh, Jay Z 4770 mobile applications processor and one gigahertz MIPS based X burst CPU, which of course you can put Android 4.0 slab right onto there. Boom. It'll be a nice workhorse tablet. Um, what's the size on that? I I think it's a smaller tablet. It's something like, uh, it's something like, uh, let's see. I think it's like a seven inch tablet. Yeah, it's a seven inch tablet. So it'll fit perfectly in your pocket. I kind of, I'm kind of interested in to see how this goes. If it can, uh, if it's got a full touch screen and uh, clocked at 444 megahertz, does 1080p video, 
um, rear 2 megapixel camera with a VGA front facing camera, USB 2.0, HDMI 1.3, micro SD slot. Uh, might need a little better processor than 444 megahertz. But, you know, if you're just doing business apps, maybe you should check that out on there. So uh, go over to Engadget.com to check that article out. Finally, it's here. Dun, dun, dun. Triple X has come in a land of the internet. Yeah, I tried to look up a couple uh, .xxx domains just for research, of course. And, of course, uh, I wasn't able to find anything interesting. I know there's a, there's a lot of .xxx domains out there available. So you might want to get on that cyber squatting if you haven't done so already. Um, it launched uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern Time today. Of course, uh, that was a few hours ago. So uh, CEO Stuart Lawley uh, has been uh, working with ICANN since the 90s uh, to put this all together. Um, and so now it's, it's here. It's finally here. So the real question is, will you use it? Will you block it? Will you need it? We'll put that in the poll and, of course, put the link in there for the question of the week. Uh, will you be going to XXX domain names or are you a little bit concerned about uh, how people can be tracking XXX domain names? I don't know. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if you have any anything, just let me know. Geekazine is my Twitter handle. Geekazine is my Twitter handle. Geekazine at gmail.com is the email address. And of course, we will be right back with the next part of Geek Smack um, right after this. You know, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of the year, the end of the year, where everything is starting to go really awry and people are really, uh, really hustling and bustling. They get sick because it's the winter months or... They, uh, they, they just have to be out of state for uh, family and, and holidays and stuff like that. Not everybody's in the same room at the same time. And running a meeting, of course, can be completely impossible. That's why you need a program like GoToMeeting by Citrix. Our friends over at Citrix have this great program. It's called GoToMeeting. We use it all the time for the Tech Podcast Network. And if you haven't used it yourself, you should check it out and see what the, what the deal is on this. Go to meeting. You can host meetings online from your computer, your your PC, your Mac, your iPad, your iPhone. Um, from their computer, they can see your screen. You can see their screen. You can control screens, and with the HD faces uh, option, you can also see in crystal clear clarity. So if somebody's got a problem, you can say, "Hey, Joe, what's wrong? I see uh, you have a problem with this. Uh, let's let's work it out here." Go to meeting makes it easy to join meetings and collaborate in time. I, like I said, we use this with the Tech Podcast Network all the time. We had our meeting last Saturday. Went without a hitch. We uh, People got up on the HD faces, and we talked back and forth, especially when Todd, when I said, hey, I'm going, I'm talking to this sponsor. Todd goes like this. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. So anyway, try GoToMeeting free today yourself. Go to the App Store. Go to the Android Market. Download the free app. Start sh sharing. Go to meeting.com. Of course, if you go to go to meeting.com, click the try it free now button and enter in that code podcast. Try it free now button, enter in that code podcast. That helps us, and you'll get a 30 day free trial with this great software. Go to meeting, buy Citrix, uh, meet smarter. Put this into your IT toolbox because you need to put it into your IT toolbox. Meet smarter with go to meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's time for the holiday edition, the holiday smack crap, where we talk about the cool stuff that you can get for the holidays and maybe some some things that you can get, maybe some stuff that you don't want to get, I don't know. But we've got a lot of great stuff here. First of all, if you are as old as I am, then you know that you were back in the 70s and 80s. You didn't have all the video. You didn't have all those video games that you have now. No Xbox 360s and stuff like that. We used to rip the bark off the trees and loved it. We loved it. No, we actually played these little cool games from uh, companies like Mattel, where they would come out with baseball and football games. And of course, you can now get them. They 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 started to re redo them and and they make them. And you can check that out. It's over on on Amazon there. The Mattel Classic Football 2 game, 
and uh, eighty nine ninety nine. You get the little red blip that goes blip 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 blip. When you when you don't when you don't catch a pass or you don't uh, anything like that. But you know if if you if you want to get into retro, but if you're a Star Wars geek and you're a Lego geek, hey, I've got peanut butter and I've got chocolate, and we're gonna put them together, and we're gonna do it by this. It's the Amazon Lego Star Wars Death Star two two. So it, it it might be missing pieces because it's designed to miss pieces, but you could have yourself a Death Star sitting in your home. It's a little bit pricey at eight hundred ninety nine dollars ninety five cents, but it's cooler than than cool. I don't know if they have a full the 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 first Death Star. I'm assuming they have the first Death Star, so you could actually have a Death Star and a Death Star two. So and of course you can uh, you can get that. There's one left in stock, so you better you better better get it now. Better get it now. <sighs> What's the, what do we go from there? Kids. Gotta love the kids. I remember these marble games. I have a marble roller coaster um, I bought a couple of years ago. And when I worked at an office, I actually strung it across the office walls and did a little marble roller coastering. These things are cool. Um, I bought one for, uh, for, some, for uh, some kids uh, a few years ago. It's the Transparent, Transparent Marble Run. You get 48 pieces, uh, 16 marbles, and it's a, you can just you can make different things, and that's the coolest thing about this. So, but we've got the ultimate gift for you right here, right now. Check this out. If you need a new shower head, and you don't uh, you don't know where to go, no, don't know what to do, you can go to here. This is over on ShipChick.com. It's called the Off the Hooks Shower Head, and it's uh, from a company called Mustard, I believe. And basically, yeah, it's a shower head phone looking red phone that uh, that then just shoots out water. I wouldn't put it up to your ear unless you need to get your ear cleaned. Just get out all the wax or something like that. But you can buy yourself a shower head. Mustard, uh, mustard has a bunch of other interesting things. They have a lot of different types of mice. Um, and uh, of course, they have different items. They're little geeky items. We'll be linking to mustard a little bit more because it looks like they have a lot of interesting stuff. So, but you can get yourself the off the hook shower head. No price just given yet. It is in the UK, so you might uh, need to wait for, uh, of course, the conversion. Um, but I don't know. Do you need a new shower head? Would you buy yourself a telephone shower head? Are you are you into telephones? I don't know. Anyway, that's your geek smack crap for this week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, stop dreaming, start streaming. That's what they say over at Roku, and it's so true to get on the over-the-top TV. You know, I've been watching uh, Burn Notice on my Roku, too. I've been watching it. Uh, I've been catching up on the episodes. I've, I've gotten up to season four where Jesse was uh, was the other spy that was burned by, uh, by, by Michael Weston. And so I've, I've just, you know, for me... A uh, series like that becomes crack. I just got to watch the next episode. Give me the next episode. So a program like that. And then you could actually stop and say, hey, I want to watch something else. Maybe maybe something from the Amazon store. Maybe I need to watch something over at Hulu Plus. I missed last night's Office episode. Or or I missed, uh, I missed The Simpsons. Or I missed Family Guy or something like that. That's why you need a pro, uh, system like Roku 2. Over the top television at its best, plus at the $99 level, you'll get games like Angry Birds, like Pac-Man, like Galaga. You'll be able to download it and play it with the special remote control. So it's more than an over the top TV system. It's an, a full entertainment system for you. So check it out over at Roku. Go over to geekazine.com forward slash Roku and get yourself a Roku. Stop dreaming, start streaming. Prices as low as $49.99 for the Roku 2. All right, now if, uh, over to you geek fans over there. We're going to start over on geekaloogie.com and you modern geeks out there. This is actually, now I've seen this before. They've, they've taken hard drives and actually the revving from the hard drives, they can actually control it to start making musical sounds. Well, this person did more of a Rube Goldberg. Well, I don't know if that's a Rube Goldberg idea or not because it's not really 
one idea, one thing activating the next thing, activating the next thing. But they take a bunch of computer peripherals. Here, let me show you. They take a bunch of computer peripherals and they turn it into a song. And the song that they did was House of the Rising Sun. Now, uh, let's play a little bit of that for you. So as you can see, they're using oscilloscopes. They're using uh, they're using old hard drives like this one uh, opened up. They've got an old scanner that they've opened up, and now of course it's playing the evening song to House of the Rising Sun. And of course, uh, we better uh, we better end it from there so we don't get any type of uh, uh, issues, copyright issues, or anything like that. But if you want to if you want to check out the whole video, go over to geekaloogie.com, geekaloogie.com. And you can find out how how you can play the House of the Rising Sun on your old scanner or your old hard drive or something like that. Speaking of YouTube and, and popular stuff, did you check this out yet? Oh, you're going to love this if you are a Star Wars geek. And it goes a little something like this. It's Shallow Wars, and yes, there goes the lightsaber, and they're gonna be coming, they're gonna be fighting it off, and there's a little Darth Vader, and there's a little Chewbacca action in there, and a whole bunch more, and that is over at, uh, well, I, I actually, uh, I actually used, uh, Dorkazine. I, I put a post on the today from Dorkazine. You can go to Dorkazine.com to check out the whole video. They have Darth Vader showing up, playing an accordion. <laughs> it, it's just funny. And of course, these guys are called the, uh, the piano guys or something like that. Um, what are they called? Uh, it was a, it's a it's a group called Paul Anderson, Tell Stewart, Shane Scott, John Schmidt, Stephen Sharp Nelson, and Al Vanderbeek. No, Al Vanderbeek. Al Vanderbeek. I don't know if there's any relation, but uh, the name of it's uh, called Piano Guys. That's that's the name of it. So if you want to check out more on that. You can go over to dorkazine.com. I've got that in there. And, of course, I have all the links in the show notes. You can go over to geekazine.com for the full show, show notes. All right. If you are a, a car geek or a tire geek, you want to check this out. This is actually very, very exciting. Never again will you have to put air into your tires. Well, eventually. Bridgestone is working on a new type of tire that will be airless. And I'm assuming that there's, and it's a lot of recycled material in here. And I'm assuming what's happening is it's creating a spring action um, that will keep the tires completely inflated. And of course, the tire tread is still there, so it, it can be an all-weather type of tire. Um, they have these tires on display at the Tokyo Motor Show over the weekend. And they're made out of a recyclable thermoplastic resin surrounded by a rubber tread. So you wouldn't have to inflate a tire ever again. Now, I wonder if, if inflating it would actually help it a little bit. So, But when you run over anything like a nail or something like that, you're not stuck in the boonies with a flat tire because everybody hates when that happens, of course. So um, not out yet, but great, great idea. I'm, the only thing that I'm concerned about is eventually those things, are that springiness is going to go away. That's why I'm wondering if they're going to fill, actually fill it with air, too. Because once the air goes out, then this would be a good backup. But still, you'd have air keeping the, the treads going and that springiness 
Uh, so it would actually add to the traction and maybe even the shock value. So you're not, when you're hitting bumps and stuff like that, it's a lot softer and you're not using your, your shocks or your springs too much. So, but anyway, if you want to check out that, go over to device.com, D V I C E, it's sci fi's website.com. Angry Birds has, uh, has set up themselves for a cookbook. Uh, you can now get yourself an Angry Birds cookbook. Um, so it's, and now in English. 40 different recipes that use eggs as the main ingredient. Go figure. And so if you want to avoid uh, birds flying into your windows and your walls, you might want to check this out and see if you can uh, make yourself some really cool stuff. Neowin.net is where you go for that one. All right. Moving from here, if you're a social media geek, you want to check this out. This is over on uh, reconnaissancesocialmedia.com. Res <laughs> yeah, I know how to read. Hello. Five things that you're not doing on LinkedIn, and you should be. Um, there's a lot of things. If you haven't used LinkedIn, I've been, uh, I've been getting into LinkedIn a lot more. And for all you, especially you people that are business geeks out there, you need to get into LinkedIn. And you need to start uh, filling in your profiles and getting into the groups that that uh, that you should because uh, there's a lot of professional stuff. There's a lot of opportunity that you're missing out. Whereas Facebook is more of a uh, a place to socialize, LinkedIn is a place to do business. And I think LinkedIn is really tr uh, uh, per taking that niche and just compelling and making it uh, something that that you need to be in. So if you don't go into LinkedIn.com, you need to go into LinkedIn. Check out this article. One of the things that they say is, uh, do you put your, uh, do you put the charities that you work on during the year, do you put that into your LinkedIn profile? Because that's a big thing right there. So a good friend of mine uh, uh, pointed that out there. So you can check that out or over at, how do I pronounce that? It's resonance, resonance, okay, resonancesocialmedia.com. Just have the link in the show notes. Go over to geekazine.com to get the show notes. Of course, if you get you want that link, just Twitter me at geekazine, and I'll and I'll and I'll send that to you. So anyway, we'll go from there over to ogizmo.com if you're an SNES fan and you want yourself an SNES for Christmas. Here you go. It's called the Superboy. Superboy. It's like Superfly. Superboy. They basically took an SNES and crammed it into a uh, into a little handheld device. As you can see, you can actually put in SNES controllers, which I kind of like. So you can play head-to-head, -head, one person, two person. Of course, you won't be able to see on the screen too well. But anyway, it's an, it's $80, and uh, it's available. So you should check it out. If you're a gaming geek, uh, you might want to have that program. It just reloaded on me. You might want to have that program into your uh, into your package there, right there. Okay, we'll go to this camera. Still getting used to all this. Anyway, for all you board gamer geeks out there, iOS uh, Assassin's Creed has been released, and you can check that out. Of course, it's been out for a little while, and I'm not a big board geek fan, board geek person myself. That's off the screen. Let's do this. I'm not a big board geek my, myself, but a lot of board games are, are now crossing over to the iPad, so you can check this out. It's a $2.99 price, um, plays two, uh, one to two players. He can do online real time and uh, a lot more. And it's just uh, just like a board game, uh, except it's for your iPad. So check that out over at BoardGameGeek.com. Great place for board gamers over at BoardGameGeek.com. Finally, of course, the Muppets have been big this holiday season because they got a movie and it's been done pretty well. And so they, they have uh, this thing called uh, Muppet.Wikia.com. You can go over. And I found this over on Muppet.Wikia.com. It's it's the old it's the old Muppets. We're we're talking Jim Henson days. Gotta love Jim Henson. And here you go. If you've never done disco, maybe you should do Sesame Disco. And it's a 1979 album, a follow up to their uh, Sesame Street Fever. So Kermit the Frog walking down the street in a white rhinestone suit or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, a lot of songs written by Joe Rapaso. 
and characters, of course, backed by a chorus of uh, female singers called The Girls. And I watched one of the videos. It was uh, Cookie Monsters. I lost my cookie at the disco. And a lot of great uh, albums from there. You can probably check that up on something like Spotify or iTunes or something like that. You'll probably find that there. But no, I've never done disco, but I will do Sesame Disco. And that's over at uh, Muppet.Wikia.com. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's it for the Geek Smack section of the thing. We're going to be talking about Xbox. Xbox in your featured section. And we'll be right back with that. All right, of course, all the shows in audio format over on Stitcher, Stitcher Internet Radio for your smart device. It's a beautiful thing to actually be able to uh, listen on the go, listen to your shows. And the best part is, uh, unlike iTunes, which doesn't kind of give you an option to list and sort and download and, and, and go from there, Stitcher gives it to you in real time. So I've created a favorites list, uh, and you can actually go up on Stitcher and uh, and check Geekazine's favorites list, and you'll see a list of of the shows that I listen to, and then you can follow those. All you have to do is star them; they become they go into your favorites area, and then you, every time you go in, you just go into your favorites area and you start where you want to. When the show is done, it goes to the next audio show. This is not intuitive. This is just the way that it should be done. And Stitcher Internet Radio seems to be the only application for your iPhone, your Android, your blue, uh, blueberry, yeah, your your BlackBerry. That's the one, and the Web OS that does it. And that's the beautiful thing about it. Stitcher Internet Radio. Plus, you can live, listen to live internet radio stations. There's a new one coming out very, very soon. I can't talk about it too much, but uh, it'll also be on Stitcher as well. But for now, go over to Stitcher.com forward slash geek. Stitcher.com forward slash geek and download the app. Put in your email address and download the app and you could win yourself $100. Great for the holiday season. Every single month they've been giving away $100. So go over to Stitcher Internet Radio. Stitcher.com forward slash geek and download the app today. And that's over at Stitcher Internet Radio for your mobile device. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we're now on the feature of, of Geek Smack. But before we do, the phone call, I don't know, the phone call that I got earlier was actually AT&T customer service sending me an automated voice message one day after my bill was ready. That's basically what that call was. So that's, that's a perfect example of poor customer service. Do, do you call people? I want my money now. Give me my, it's been a day. Give me my money now. Anyway, topic of the week. Xbox, of course, and I and, uh, found out earlier today that they've, they've delayed this uh, update, but they're coming out with a new update, which is going to change the interface of the Xbox. It's also going to add voice ju uh, gesture, uh, gestures and voice options. And it is going to be a chain game changer for Xbox. Now, there have been reports that I've been reading out there that say that gaming sales are down. And it's not to say that gaming is dead, but Microsoft does seem to have plans to kind of morph the Xbox into something else. The new update that's, that will be launching is uh, Xbox for updates for gestures and voice. So basically, if you have a Kinect on your Xbox, you'll be able to go in and you'll be able to do this and move stuff around. Just like what you would a game. And of course, you could use a voice. So you could say, Xbox, find movies, or find movies, Iron Man, and I'll do that. Or uh, Xbox, Bing, Iron Man, and it will go through a search of Iron Man stuff. You won't have to use the remote that much. Of course, uh, you have to be in more of a quiet room to, to do that type of stuff, but you'll be able to just go and like move stuff around without even having to have a remote into your hands, which is actually pretty cool. It, it doesn't stop there. They've actually, uh, they're working with Verizon Fios. Next year, they'll be uh, bringing on Comcast, Time Warner's in talks, some of the other cable channels that have these over-the-top solutions for TV. You, you buy the cable package, and then you can watch certain TV channels on the web, which is really cool. Verizon Fios will be the first one on the Xbox 360. It's not a free service. I think it's like $60 a month with Xbox Live. Um, and of course, you need your cable, your your cable uh, a bill as well. 
Um, and of course, there's a lot of other programs that's going to be coming on there, which is kind of turning the Xbox into this entertainment system rather than a gaming system. In fact, I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of families that are going to be buying more than one Xbox because uh, the folks want to watch a movie and the kids want to play a game. And so the kids will have their Xbox in their room playing the Smurfs and mom and dad will be in the uh, living room watching a movie, maybe even a third one. So dad's down in the uh, workshop uh, watching, uh, watching a movie. Mom's upstairs on the couch watching a movie. The kids are in the room watching a kid's movie. That's where it's going to go. Microsoft is bringing Xbox into a full entertainment system, and I, and I think it's a great idea. And it's going to be very multifaceted, very useful. You'll be able to pop in a DVD if you want to. You'll have a hard drive in there, so you'll be able to save stuff on the hard drive. You'll be able to play games. It, it, it's an all-around system. And you don't even need a remote. Where's the remote? I don't know. I just don't need it. Xbox, do something for me. Now, whether... Whether Xbox is getting out, of, I don't think they're getting out of the gaming business one bit, but they're adding more value to the Xbox, something that we can't really do, something that PlayStation could do, but hasn't really been working in that direction too much. They have stuff, but not not to the level that Microsoft is. Can't wait to see what they're going to say at CES, because that's going to I have a feeling they're going to come out with some pretty powerful stuff on the Xbox side. So but the real question is, do you use an Xbox? Do you have an Xbox 360? Do you play the games? Do you use the entertainment features from the Xbox 360? Do you have a Kinect? Do you use a Kinect? Let me know. Twitter me at Geekazine or email me at Geekazine at gmail.com. Let's put back up the Twitter handle. There we go. Geekazine is my Twitter handle. Geekazine at gmail.com is the email address. Of course, you can call me on the hotline at 608-205-4378. What do you think? What, what, how is Xbox changing? the way that we think of gaming now. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I can't wait for the Xbox 720 because whatever the Xbox 360 is going to do, 720 is going to do even better. And of course, Windows 8 will also have these features. And there's a lot of questions whether they're just going to be pretty much inter interchangeable, very compatible with each other. So Apple TV, if you're coming out with a TV, you better do it soon because Microsoft might start stealing the over-the-top TV market from you. So, anyway, that's it for Geek Smack. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening if you're listening to the audio version. We do this every single Tuesday for Wednesday Consumption. Like I said, next week, though, we will not be doing a show because we will be in Detroit for something I can't talk about. It's the spy game for cars, so. But I will be bringing my video camera. There is some stuff I can do some video on. And, of course, when... We can talk about the embargoed information. I will talk about the embargoed information. So just stick over on geekazine.com for all that information. www.geekazine.com. Of course, the Day in Tech History split from Geekazine. Go over to dayintechhistory.com for your daily dose of technology history. And of course, we will be back uh, hopefully next week. We'll, I'll let you know if I do a Thursday show. Probably will, because I don't have anything to do on a Thursday. But sleep and eat bonbons. Maybe not. I don't know. But we'll do. We'll get you a show out there and go from there. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. We will see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, geek out, as I say. Take care.